Okay, we're still talking about solving radical equations, and we're going to work through some more examples. The first one is the square root of 2x squared minus 2. All of that is under the radical, and that equals 4. And we need to solve for x, and take note that there's an x squared here under the radical. Okay, to solve for x, I need to get this thing out from under the radical. And so I can get rid of the radical by squaring it. And if I square the left side, I also square the right side. And so this gives me on the left 2x squared minus 2. And on the right, I have 16. Now I can uh, add 2 to each side. And that gives me 2x squared equals 18. And these numbers work out nicely. A lot of times example problems in math class are rigged that way. You can see when I divide by 2, those will cancel out and I get x squared equals 9. And now I can take the square root of each side and find x. And x equals plus or minus 3. And don't forget the plus or minus. Note that there are two solutions. Having two solutions is typical when you have your variable squared like we have in this case. Now, something else is a possibility that you need to be aware of. Take a look at this next example. Now, the square root of 3x squared minus 8 plus x equals 0. Well, I need to find x. And right now I have an x here, but there's also an x here under the radical. So I need to get rid of that. Well, one thing I can do is subtract x from each side. And that gives me the square root of 3x squared minus 8 equals x. And now I can get rid of the radical by squaring both sides. And the radical goes away on the left, and I have 3x squared minus 8 equals x squared. And then if I subtract x squared from each side, I get 2x squared minus 8 equals 0. And then let's add 8 to each side. And I get 2x squared equals 8. Divide each side by 2, and I get x squared equals 4. And so from that, I get x is equal to plus or minus 2. So again, I started out with this x squared, and notice that there are two solutions, positive 2 and negative 2. But there's a problem here. When you square both sides, you raise the degree of the equation. So this was really a first degree equation. This uh, 3x squared under the radical can be thought of as just a, a degree 1, and that's a degree 1. When, when, um, when you raise the degree of the equation like that by multiplying by a variable or squaring both sides, you run the risk of introducing an additional solution that isn't valid. It's what we call an extraneous root or an extraneous solution. And that's a possibility when you do this, when you square both sides. So we get two answers here. We really should check these answers every time. So we check the answer by plugging it into the original equation. And watch what happens here. Let's check. And I'll start, I'll check the 2. If I write 3 times 2 squared minus 8 plus 2 equals 0. Well, let's, let's do that. 3 times 2 squared is, well, 3 times 4, that's 12 right there. Minus 8 is 4. I have the square root of 4 plus 2 equals 0. That's 2 plus 2 equals 0. That does not work. Positive 2 does not work. Let's try it with negative 2 and see if that works. So I'll take the square root of 3 times negative 2 squared minus 8 plus negative 2 equals 0. So I'm just taking my original equation and plugging my answers. And I'm plugging in a negative 2 right there for x. And when I do this here, I have negative 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 8 is 4, I have the square root of 4 plus negative 2. And the square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So that one works. So x equals negative 2 is the answer.
x equals positive 2 is not the answer. That's an extraneous solution. So if you, if you stop here, you've actually made a mistake because writing x is plus or minus 2, you're indicating two answers, one of which is not correct. And the point of this example is that squaring both sides runs the risk of introducing this extra solution which may or may not be valid. And in this case it's not valid and we find that out by plugging our solutions into the original equation. And that was the, the checks that we did over here on the right. Now we'll do one more example. In many cases, especially in problems in the real world, the answers don't always work out to nice round numbers. So let's do one where the numbers aren't contrived to work out nicely. And this example is 13 is equal to the square root of x squared over 4 minus 3. Okay, I'm trying to find x. Right now x is stuck down here under the radical. I can get rid of the radical by squaring both sides. So 13 squared on the left is 169. On the right, the square gets rid of the radical, and I have x squared over 4 minus 3. So the, actually, hold on here. The, um, in, the, in the printed notes, if you're looking at the page, that's supposed to be a plus 3 right there. So I'm, I'm going to change the problem. That's a, a plus 3 right there, which is going to give me a plus 3 right here. This was the, this was the problem I intended to solve. So let's continue. I'm going to subtract 3 from each side, and that gives me 166 on the left equals x squared over 4. And then if I multiply both sides by 4, on the right those cancel out, and I'm left with x squared all by itself. And x squared is equal to 166 times 4. And 166 times 4 is 664. And so then to find x, I just take the square root of each side, and that gives me x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 664, which comes out to approximately 25.77. Okay, it doesn't work out to a nice round number. And that's the point of this problem. A lot of times in math classes, when you're uh, just being introduced to the concept or trying to see the basic idea behind a problem, the numbers are deliberately chosen to be relatively simple so that the concept itself is not obscured. But in the real world, things don't always work out to these nice simple numbers. And this is an example of exactly that.